Hello, my name is Madhu Parab. Uh, I'm just going to talk to you a few minutes about my native language. Anyhow, one, two, three, here we go. Wife, they said, bye, Zauria. Three girls say, I heard it near. Let me see you come here. But first word, bye, Zauria, means motherfucker. Five craziest things my dad has done. Um, do you want good things or bad things? <laughs> oh my god. Um, top five. Okay. <laughs> um, number one. Coming to Canada, I'd say, is probably one of the craziest things he's done. Uh, he met my mother. Uh, he asked her out the, uh, at a gas station. He uh, wrote a letter to uh, Prince Harry to try and sell him a portrait of him and his mom that he had painted and uh, was offended by the letter that he received uh, and cursed on the Queen. I'd have to say that the number one crazy thing that Madhu did was the condom factory. October 6, 2003. Honorable Your Highness Prince Harry. Once upon a time, Dad found a um, picture of uh, Prince Diana and Prince Harry. I take this opportunity to introduce myself as an artist and a photographer who would like to submit a photograph of one of my paintings. And he really, the picture really struck out to him. He really, you know, had some, you know, emotional connection with it. So he decided he was going to paint it. The subject of the painting is Your Highness with Princess Diana. For a long time, I've been interested in reproducing this painting to help the charity which supports the mind victims and other charities that Princess Diana supported. So when he painted it, after a while, he decided he was going to uh, try and uh, send it to uh, Prince Harry. I would appreciate Your Highness guiding me with this endeavor. Thank you sincerely. Madhu N. Parab. He got a rejection letter from the... Uh, from the, you know, the prince's uh, secretary of service, and uh, he was he was pretty upset about that. You know, it just simply said, uh, "Dear Mr. Macmooker Parop," or something of that sort, and then it just says, "Unfortunately, Prince Harry is not interested at this time in purchasing your painting." And Dad was like, "Do you know what that means?" I said, uh, "No idea." And he's like, "Well, he says Macmooker Parop basically means uh, fart," and I was like, "What?" And he's like, "He's calling me Mr. Fart." And I was like, oh, he goes, fuck Prince Harry, fuck the Queen. And then he did the big, the, which was his way of saying, which was a bizarre way. Yeah, it was, he, that, the, the, the name spelling was, you know, that set that off because he clearly wrote his name and they still spelled it wrong. And, you know, so, yeah, he wasn't happy about that. But it was funny to us. <laughs> He's always edgy with the royal family anyways, of course, being East Indian, but... That, that was kind of the nail in the coffin. So he still watched cricket, and he still ate crumpets, and he still loved his, you know, his nice pants, his, his kind of very English ways, despite the fact that he told the queen to go fuck herself. He was an artist and a photographer and a commercial artist as well. He did, I don't know how many weddings. Every few weekends, he'd be gone somewhere in rural Newfoundland taking pictures of somebody's wedding and there'd be people coming to her house to look at the negatives, to pick out which ones they wanted. Pizza places, Mr. Jim's Pizza and you know, Venice, I think, Sal's. Uh, and Dad did all their signs for him and their menus and everything like that. Photography was, how I perceive it anyways, was his bread and butter of how he had to make a go of it to keep food on the table, so to speak. His art uh, is uh, sort of like um, traditional in some ways. So there is a bit of romance in the way that Madhu painted and Wadi painted, like the ballerina, for instance, you know, kind of like a treasured piece uh, in the family. Was his ballerina? The ballerina is probably my favorite. He took about a year on that one. He did that when he retired, and he really poured a lot of time and effort into it. And I would see him have a piece of it done, not like it, 
kind of erase it a bit, you know, start it over, paint over it until we got it just right. I don't think these art got the recognition it deserved. Um, and I do struggle with that because um, I feel like uh, it's something that now maybe people would enjoy more. What he uh, was producing as an artist was uh, was not uncommon to see in many commercial galleries in St. John's and elsewhere at the same time. And for whatever reason, um, it, it was never shown in that context. I mean, I know from my own experience growing up, I experienced a lot of racism. So I assume Dad experienced a lot of racism as as even more so. Um, so yeah. So I, I'm sure race had a part to play. Dad could be someone who was a bit aggressive uh, in his ways as well. So even during the negotiations, maybe he was overly aggressive. Certainly there may have been some racism at play. Certainly there could have been some classism at play. And almost certainly, as certain as anything else, Madhu, um, uh, Madhu's personality was in play. Um, because he was the type of guy that if he didn't uh, get what he wanted right away, it was fuck you. Uh, I know he was interviewed for Memorial University at one point as a photographer. Dad is sitting there in the interview and the man's wearing sandals with socks and his feet are up on the desk. Dad got really angry uh, because of the fact he knew the interview was going nowhere and this man's feet were up in front of his face and he threatened him and he says, take your feet down before I, I cut your throat, right? And it's uh, typical of dad, like he goes from zero to a hundred like that. Obviously he didn't get the job, uh, but it was uh, just an example of like uh, his difficulty in working for other people. The way that I have always thought about um, his art as it pertains to like Newfoundland and the landscape in Newfoundland was as somebody trying to figure out, figure it out. What he brought and what, what he discovered, I guess only he knows, but as an observer of his art, I feel like I always saw a, the struggle um, to understand this place and uh, trying to figure out how he fit in it. IMAX International Inc. was the brainchild, I guess, uh, born out of my dad's desire to have a better life for all of us. Well, I remember that it seemed to come out of nowhere, uh, and that um, it was like this kooky idea that Madhu had to, to uh, start a business. He decided he was going to open an import-export company. And he got the grants from Alcoa and from Newfoundland Enterprise and he built a factory or assembly plant in um, what's Maddox Cove uh, in the Ghouls. The first uh, product they wanted him to bring in, which is not one that Dad wanted to do, was condoms. So uh, that was fun. Uh, he was going to import condoms from India, from some connection in India. And, um, you know, I used them. I was happy to use them. Raja means king in uh, Hindi. So dad took the idea of he, uh, Raja and Rani for queen uh, so that he could market to men and women. Dad did all the design himself. Designed the box, designed a pamphlet inside with the instructions, did all the illustrations, which was kind of disturbing for a 16 year old boy to come home and see your dad drawing uh, the proper technique to put on a condom. One day I remember I came into the drafting, uh, to his room where he was doing, uh, on the drafting table, there was this painted, uh, a piece of cardboard with a, a catchphrase on it and it said Raja condoms and I was like mm, okay this is kind of weird and then it said wouldn't you like to be king of the night and I was like holy crap dad that is so corny and dad was like what do you mean this is this is what do this is marketing this is going to get people interested they're going to be wanting to have these because they want to have a good experience and you know that's I'm providing a service and I'm going to keep people safe and I was like, okay. There was a lot of, still a lot of stigmatism around, uh, a stigma around condoms. And when it was decided that that was the product he was bringing in and the location was decided, uh, there was a lot of uproar from the local community in that area. 
so Madhu uh, came up against some real opposition to this, which is fucking bizarre. Uh, they thought he was going to bring in AIDS. They called him a lot of names, um, told him to go back to where he's from, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and they told him they weren't going to let his trucks go by. There was uh, some um, uh, rumblings and protests from mainly from the church groups at that time uh, who didn't want that in the community. So uh, when I was 17 years old, he told me to go in and meet the truck and bring my baseball bat just in case. So that's what I did. <laughs> I went into the warehouse. I sat on the hood of the car with a baseball bat across my laps and I waited for a, uh, a delivery truck to show up. And while I was waiting, there was a truck that came by, stopped for a second, looked at me, and then drove on. Uh, I can only assume that was probably one of the people that were planning on protesting, I guess, the, uh, the offload of these uh, condoms, uh, but we'll never know. We landed in Gander, and then uh, I was driving back home, so I applied for my international lab uh, license. So I drove from Gander to St. John's with my brother, and uh, that was how the journey started. Now my uh, eldest brother, Suresh, who is an architect, he came to St. John's from England, and uh, he asked me, why don't you come to Newfoundland? I said, okay, and then myself and Madhu, we came to Newfoundland in 1970, in July. Immigration to Canada was very easy that time because Canada needed some people, immigrants and all this thing. So they were looking for skilled workers. And that's the reason Madhu got the job because he was an artist. He got the visa and I didn't get it because uh, uh, they says there's no prospect for you in uh, Canada. So we waited and then they said, you don't have a job. So my brother Suresh said, he can work with me. So then they gave me a visa and then we both, to, uh, both together, we came to Canada. I was in Toronto. He was back in St. John's, but my, eldest brother Suresh used to tell me that Madhu is hardly now found. He always goes somewhere out and I believe he was going out with Judy. Dad was learning to drive with the RCMP. Mom worked at, I think it was Texaco. He came into this you know, gas bar looking for gas and uh, one of her co-workers, as soon as she you know, saw my dad, steered my mom to ask my dad out and uh, she did. Dad being the artist he was, he decided uh, he was going to sketch my mother. Um, and so he did a really good sketch of mom uh, at the time, uh, 1972 sometime. And then uh, I was born, you know, about 12, not long after. I was, I was, I think, yeah. He got the marriage and all the flowers, girls and all kind of things, they were wearing saris. He got the saris from India and all kind of thing, and uh, he did a marriage ceremony in Indian style. There was a lot of discomfort on both sides of the family because my, my dad's my, um, brother, uh, Suresh, was uncomfortable with dad being with a, you know, a white woman. Uh, this was a, a shame for the family. I think at first uh, it was a bit of a shock for both sides. Um, they both told me that uh, not everyone agreed with it. And on uh, my my uh, mom's side, here's my dad with a, a foreign man who's not white. Uh, what kind of life is that? He's not even Christian. So like from her family's perspective as Anglicans, it was a, ch a challenge, right? So there's a lot of complexities going on in the background, a lot of arguments, a lot of fighting. You know, it's 1972, uh, there's an Indian man marrying a white lady in St. John's, Newfoundland, which is not exactly a hub of uh, 
cultural differences. So I guess it was, at the time, it was quite the brave move to do. It probably wasn't very much accepted overall, so. In the early years, there was, we had money, not a lot of money, we never had a lot of money, but there was more money than, than being broke. Sometimes we had a little bit of a feast, and then there'd be a lot of famine, and uh, quite often behind in the rent. Sometimes, I remember when we were on Ruth Avenue, there was one time he told me we were six months behind. Actually, Madhu never had a real job. His profession was artist, and then he developed as a photographer, and all kind of thing. Not many organizations were there who could hire him and all these things. So what he could do is only start his own profession, all these things, so, you know, individual thing. But he couldn't get a job as such. Growing up, like Dad always had uh, something that he was working on. And uh, what was quite routine was that he would paint a painting and then, uh, because we didn't have a lot of money as we got closer to Christmas, he would, he would sell a painting in order to pay for Christmas gifts. And mom worked odd jobs before she went into data entry and learned uh, some computer programming stuff. When all of that shit went down with this opposition to uh, the business with the condoms, um, you know, Madhu being the fiery kind of like fuck you guy that uh, he was, it, it was perfect. He uh, hated it, uh, but there was also a part of him that was into it. On the other side of that, uh, it was the best year financially my dad ever had. It was the most he'd ever earned, um, which was still not far above the poverty line, and uh, there was a happier vibe in the household. Uh, so that was that one year. And then quickly things started to unravel. Uh, people weren't interested in having the condoms in their convenience stores or their pharmacies after a while. And um, then there was, uh, the government didn't give dad as much money he needed in order to, to put more into the marketing, into the, to the um, advertising of, of the product. So uh, ultimately it failed. And then uh, dad slipped into a really dark place because obviously he had this dream of finally getting his family out of poverty and uh, once again failed. How does all of that make you feel? Um, proud and sad. Um, proud that dad stuck to his guns. He went through, he did lawyers, he did courts. He proved his point, he proved his case uh, because he was determined to get this business going. And, but sad that people would be so short-sighted to, to uh, write him off as just, you know, uh, another immigrant stealing jobs from Newfoundlanders and, and trying to bring in, you know, things that are not necessary and, and, and that kind of thing. It was just foolishness. Yeah. It, it's not a, not something that, it's not my Newfoundland, right? So I don't, I don't, it's not something I understand, yeah. Well, it's a sad, but knowing Madhu, 
I couldn't pursue him, and that, that's his choice. But once he stick to his ideas, he's very determined to doing that. So there's no way I could change him. The last conversation that I had with him was, um, we always called me Scooby-Doo. And uh, so he was saying to me, you know, Scooby, um, it, life's a struggle. You know, life is just a struggle. I think a lot of the times I see failure uh, constantly. And then I see my own failure inside of those failures. So there's like this constant cycle uh, that I think that I'm trapped in with my dad as a, as a ghost in my life. Um, and my greatest fear is to become my dad. So in that, to be trapped by failure and to see only failure. It was like fear to my father. Um, depends on your definition of fear. Um, I mean, he had a good childhood. He had struggles, yes, but he met my mother, fell in love. He had two handsome boys. He had some great grandkids. Um, and, uh, you know, he was loved. Um, not much more you can ask for. Was it right to success or failure? <sighs> I'm going to try and be positive. I'm going to say success. Madhu had a lot of failures in his life, and he always he was fall again, he's get up and go, you know, that attitude he had. If something is goes wrong, he will get up and do something different. Madhu's life was an absolute success, an inspiration. He fucking came here and suffered through racism and poverty to raise his family. And what a beautiful family. And it was always about that word that he always used time and time again, legacy, legacy. What was his legacy to his children? What was his legacy to the world? His legacy is the pictures and paintings. Hello, my name is Madhu Parab. Can you hear me? Thank you.